Tesla's CEO presented more documents to support his attempt to cancel the purchase agreement, this time based on information from a complaint filed by the former Twitter security chief. A court in Delaware will decide if the Tesla CEO can back out of his $44 billion offer to buy the platform. Do you think Elon Musk will be able to back off from the deal? Let's find out in the video, so make sure you stick with me to the end. Now, without any further delay, let's get into the video. First up, Musk now pleads whistleblower case not to buy Twitter. Peter Zatko, a Twitter whistleblower, told U.S. lawmakers last Tuesday that the company made egregious security mistakes. On the same day, Twitter shareholders voted overwhelmingly to give these problems to Elon Musk. The CEO of Tesla, who owns more than 9% of Twitter and agreed to buy the company in April, is unlikely to have been one of the 99% of voting shareholders who supported the $44 billion, 38.5 billion pounds deal, since he now wants to back out of it. At a trial that starts on October 17, a judge in Delaware will decide whether Musk can walk away or must buy the business on the terms he had agreed to. Hedge funds, which are financial companies that like to make big bets on how the markets will go, seem to be on the side of, most of, Twitter shareholders as well. David Einhorn, who started the Greenlight Capital Fund, bought a new stake in Twitter last month. He did this because he thinks the Delaware Chancery Court will follow the law and apply it here by forcing Musk to complete the deal at $54.20, or 47.46 pounds a share. A hedge fund called Pentwater Capital Management, which bought a lot of shares in Twitter this year, has also said that it thinks Twitter will win. Still, Zatko has given Musk a chance in Delaware by filing a whistleblower complaint that says the company had a lot of security problems. In his testimony, the former head of security at Twitter, who started working there in November 2020 and was fired in January of this year, said he had found extreme, egregious deficiencies by Twitter in every area of his mandate, such as interference by foreign governments and poor control of employee access to user data. Before, Musk's case was mostly based on the idea that Twitter was hiding the number of spam accounts, which aren't run by humans and cause problems on the platform. Among its monetizable daily active users, MDAU, which is a key business metric for the company, Zatko's appearance last week could be seen as a stand-in for the testimony that really matters to Musk, which is a deposition that will be given to his lawyers on September 9 and used in court. Zatko's opening statement showed the general direction of what Musk is likely to say. He said that because people in charge of Twitter are lying to the public, to lawmakers, to regulators, and even to Twitter's own board of directors. When he joined Twitter, he found out that this very important company was more than a decade behind in terms of security. Musk has been given permission to add Zatko's revelations to his lawsuit, which he says are a material adverse effect on the company that changes the value of the business and makes the deal invalid. Zatko also says in his complaint that Twitter broke the merger agreement between the company and Musk by making false representations about its security arrangements and other things. A representation is a statement of fact that is meant to reassure the other party in a deal. Experts say that even with Zatko's help, Musk will still have a hard time getting out of the deal. Brian Quinn, a professor at the law school at Boston College, says that before the deal was made, the company had put a lot of information in its financial results about the risk of actual or perceived security breaches and mistakes or weaknesses in its software, to the extent that cybersecurity and data privacy issues are already widely known to pose risks to the company. The recent testimony doesn't really add to the overall picture and doesn't make the representation fail. Howard Fisher, a partner at the U.S. law firm Moses Singer, says that Delaware courts are very hesitant to back claims of material adverse effect. Zatko's complaint says that Twitter executives don't have any reason to look for bot accounts and that the platform doesn't do enough to deal with bot accounts, even though it doesn't count them in its MDAU number. This is a little different from Musk's main reason for pulling out of the deal, which was that Twitter's MDAU numbers undercount the number of bots. Fisher said that Twitter might be a mess that isn't well run or governed, but one of the reasons Musk said he wanted to buy the platform was so he could run it better, and the things people say about bots don't really back up what Musk says. And given how skeptical Delaware courts are of people who say they've suffered a material harm, I doubt these will qualify. Anat Beck, a law professor at Case Western Reserve University in Ohio, said that the bar is very high to meet a fraud or material adverse effect standard, and doesn't think that they're there yet unless they find something else. John Coffey, a law professor at New York's Columbia University, said that any mistakes found by Zatko can be fixed by the new owner. He also said that Delaware, where Twitter is based, is likely to support deals like Musk's. Even if Twitter did make mistakes, Musk could fix them without them hurting the value of Twitter, he says, so he hasn't been hurt in a way that can't be fixed. Zatko brought up a problem that Musk didn't seem to care about before and that may not have a big effect on his finances. Due to Delaware's strong commitment to deal certainty, I don't think Musk will win this. It will, however, add more confusion to a case that is already hard to understand. Carl Tobias, who holds the Williams Chair in Law at the University of Richmond, says that Zacco's testimony makes it slightly more likely that the two sides will reach a settlement. I think that Zacco
Zatko's whistleblower complaint and his testimony to the Judiciary Committee slightly back up some of Musk's criticisms of Twitter. But neither the complaint nor the hearing show that anything bad happened that Musk can use to win the case. So the case could still be settled, even though Musk has a long history of not settling legal disputes. In other news, Elon Musk wants the NHTSA to change its language after a recall of 1 million Tesla cars. Elon Musk said the NHTSA's way of referring to over-the-air software updates as recalls was outdated and wrong. After the agency called back more than a million Tesla EVs because of a problem with the window system. The NHTSA released a safety recall report this morning for 1,096,762 Tesla vehicles. These include the 2021 to 2022 Tesla Model S, the 2021 to 2022 Tesla Model X, the 2017 to 2022 Tesla Model 3, and the 2020 to 2021 Tesla Model Y. The problem is with the way Tesla's windows automatically roll up and down. The NHTSA said that vehicles may not meet certain requirements for automatic window reversal systems in FMVSS. The agency also explained the risk by saying, if a window is closing and it senses an obstruction, the occupant may be more likely to get hurt by being pinched. But Tesla won't have to bring all of its more than 1 million cars into service centers to fix the problem. It can be fixed with a software update, which Tesla will send to all affected vehicles and let them download over the internet. Musk thinks that the word recall needs to be updated because cars with the problems like the automatic window reversal system can be fixed with software updates. Most people associate the word recall with a problem that needs to be fixed by replacing hardware, which makes it hard to understand what the problem is. But the NHTSA has kept using the word recall to talk about these kinds of problems. But the NHTSA told Tesla in February that manufacturers must start recalls for any kind of repair, even software updates. According to what the agency said, a software update is still considered a recall. So that concludes today's video. If you found the video helpful, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to share the video with your friends and family. Also, do let me know in the comment section what you think about Elon Musk being able to back off from the deal. Thanks for watching and see you next time.